as uh, has gone before. To seek out new protocol and new relationship management. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And now, the future with the president and director of the Protocol School of Washington, may I present Miss Pema Eyring. music. What I'm going to share with you today is a perspective. A perspective to see the future of protocol. And as we all know in our history books, you know, protocol has tended to be a little bit on the more formal side. Uh, not that I recall at this time frame, but in the United States, gentlemen used to tip hats at ladies. Now they won't take their hat off at a baseball game over our national anthem. So things change in our society, and they change abroad as well. I will say, this is my first time to The Hague, to your country, and I am impressed. I'm very impressed by the hospitality. And just when, when Javert Manon invited me, and we met through Facebook, oh no, it was through LinkedIn, uh, so William, it is a great place to meet other <laughs> protocol geeks like myself, uh, but he introduced himself to me, uh, virtually, and we had a little bit of a conversation virtually, and we talked more, and my deputy director visited him here at The Hague, and then he invited me, and I have never been treated like such a VIP. Yourself and John Paul and this wonderful team of ushers uh, with the Protocol Bureau, I just want to say thank you very much. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to show a little video clip. You know, Americans are known for their sense of humor. So let me show you this little video clip just to set the stage. So what do you do for money? You want to tell me about it? Do you have to strangers and all that? No. Mm, there must be something on the internet. Or finance. <gasps> Genetic engineering, maybe? Huh? You're an image consultant. Okay. Okay. So you sort of troubleshoot for folks, you know? Give them makeovers and they need revamping, right? Right. Hey, look. I'm flying to LA to start an anchor job in the local news, and I do not think that it's an accident that I'm sitting next to you. I see. So the cosmic purpose of our meeting is for me to give you free advice. What do I get out of it? We don't know that. But I'll you. If I do it, will you shut up? Quiet as the dead. Your hair is too big, your brows are too dark, your nails are too long, and your foundation is too orange. Your perfume is too sweet. It's the news, honey, not the prom. I like your eyes. Thank you. Bluer. Try the tinted contacts, but only when you're anchoring or in LA. Your own sign will take them out. What about my accent? I'm always being warned to stop saying y'all. Don't ever stop saying y'all. Your y'all is your trademark. To say y'all, you'll be promoted in six months. Say y'all with a smile, and you'll be famous at 12. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, will you please shut up? There's a little bit of relationship management going on there. What did you notice in that video clip? Anyone? Shout it out. What did you notice? The guy was very kind. He was very kind, yeah. although he didn't want to be very kind, did he? He did give her free advice. He did. He gave her free. He, she got it. She actually received what she wanted, didn't she? She did. Yes. Good, good notice. What else? A little awkwardness. Did you notice the body language? She was leaning towards him, and he was trying to lean towards the airplane. I'm sure you've had this situation occur as you travel. You don't want to talk to anyone, but someone makes you talk to them. Anything else? Well, the point here, why, before we get into the, the uh, presentation, was it's about making first impressions. 
And we have this opportunity to make first impressions <coughs> all the time, in our personal life as well as in our professional life. And we represent not only ourselves, but we represent our country and our company, or our government, or our business, and our family. And so these first impressions are critical when you're doing and building relationships. So as you see here with the definition of protocol, Webster's, note how it talks about the customs and regulations dealing with diplomatic formality and glasses breaking, precedence, and <laughs> etiquette. I mean, these formalities, that's what people think when they hear about protocol. When <laughs> it was a a really great opportunity for me to purchase the, the school. I'm a graduate of the Protocol School of Washington more than 17 years ago. I was the chief of protocol at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. I was the first civilian to hold that position because most of the chiefs of protocol and the commands are military. I was pretty excited about that. I was very young, too, a long, long time ago. And I received this call. I hadn't been on the job very long received a call from my friend at Pearlbert Field, which is a base in Florida. And she said, Pamela, I just went to the Protocol School of Washington. And I said, Monica, wh what is this? What is the Protocol School of Washington? What it, is it the Betty Ford Clinic for really rude people? And she laughed, but really what it was, was training for us. People in the industry that planned events and visits and meetings and I, I said, I must go, and I did, and it changed my life. I didn't know what I didn't know. I thought, hey, I work for a four-star general. He has 200 and some thousand people that work for him. I'm supporting all about 12 to 15 different bases all over the world in protocol with, my, with people in those uh, offices. But when I went to the school, I did not realize I didn't know what I didn't know. And that's why I'm sharing this with you and showing how this definition is changing. Really what modern protocol is, is the art of creating a distraction-free environment. And note that it's to build relationships. No matter what the purpose or the industry, it really is to build relationships so that you can conduct business. The bonus for us is that we become friends sometimes, too. How many of you in the audience have co colleagues, workers, or business uh, uh, partners that you're friends with? Raise your hand. Is that, is that a bonus? Isn't it a bonus when you can do business together and like each other? Because that can be difficult. It can be very difficult. So create a distraction-free environment. What, what would that be? What is a distraction-free environment? It goes back to when you're building relationships back to that first impression. 55% of a first impression is based on the way that you look, how you present yourself physically. You know, your manner of dress and attire, your hair, your glasses, your makeup, how you say y'all. That's in South Carolina, they say all y'all. Not just a y'all, it's all y'all. I don't know, I'm still working on but it is regardless of the purpose. I need some help in the rear of the screen to thank you. It's almost nice to have someone back there that knows what they're doing. So I like this quote from Dale Carnegie. When dealing with people, remember you're not dealing with creatures of logic. You're dealing with creatures of emotion. And I think those that are in doing protocol or planning events, or um, you know, building these relationships and relationship management, they have service heart. And when I say service heart, that means they care about people. They care that it's important to do the relationship building. Now, when you're building these, you know, why now? Why now? This should have been, you know, this should be evident 20 years ago, but. There are drivers that are causing us to focus, not only in government, but in business, on providing relationship management uh, efforts. And really, we're all feeling the poor economic conditions that are here. And it's not going to go away very soon, unfortunately. 
Plus, our societies are becoming less formal. They're being more casual. I think the United States is probably one of the most casual countries that I, I've experienced. The dependence on electronic communication tools. How many of you have a Blackberry? Crackberry, Blueberry, <laughs> Strawberry, okay? Then we go into the iPhones and, and the smartphones versus the dumb phones. Oh my gosh, as they say. We are addicted. In fact, there was a new, uh, there was an article, article that came out in the New York Times that talked about how adults would give up sex and chocolate to keep their phone. <laughs> oh, can you believe that? The chocolate? Oh my gosh. I was devastated. But we are, we're getting very addicted. And, and people are, there's behaviors that are coming out. Behaviors are like when we're hiding behind a text message or our screen, our laptop, uh, or our screen on our PC, and we can say whatever we want to say, can't we? I had a colleague who we were doing some work together, and you know, it's very difficult to do planning when they live in a, another state, and especially in the United States, because it could be pretty far. And we were, he was upset. I could tell. And he was very curt and, and sharp in his, not, not the words, but just brief. And then I asked him a question back. And then he, his email came back, and it was a little direct and larger font. And then the font, hit me, and I went back to him, and it came back. And not only was it bolded in larger font, it had some exclamation marks. That's when someone has to say, okay, I can ruin this relationship or challenge it by sending another email with larger font. Huh? Huh? I could do this. Or I could call him. I could call him and say, hey, you know, I'm noticing some exchange here that's, you know, I'm, that we're not communicating the way that we should. What is wrong? What can I do to help? What, what is it that you need from me? And I did that, and it helped. And we have to think that those blackberries and crackberries and phones and tablets, they do not replace relationships. We have to have them to work in today's efficient ways that we work, but please, please don't sleep with them. Stop it. Now, at least in the United States, we're seeing a lot of this. It's hard to have a conversation with an American because they're busy looking up here. So if you do that, if you see an American doing that, you need to address that with them right away. Dutch are very straightforward, correct? Okay. Good. They'll appreciate it. Hopefully they won't throw the phone at you, but still. <laughs> so, and then also there's high competition for services and products. What makes a company stand out from another company that has similar offerings? It's their people, often called human capital. But it's the people that makes the difference. If I have a choice, to fly a certain airline, like KLM. Would I pick KLM because of the lowest fare? Maybe. But maybe I would pick them because they're my choice airline because of how they treat me. Because I can fly any, I mean, there's many airlines, we know. But there's a reputation that they have, a brand. And what we want is brand loyalty. So, also we're seeing a need to conduct business globally. Now, here at The Hague, it's very common. But, for other countries, they're just starting this effort. And there are communication gaps. And not just with language, but communication styles. And they're having to, to travel abroad and they don't know what they're doing. They're very nervous about it. And maybe they don't speak the language and they have interpreters and all of these things happen. It's very difficult, and they have to be prepared. But the worst thing is, is in today's society, we have a lack of training in professionalism, in people skills, and in international etiquette. At one time, parents took on that role. I'm sure here as well. We, we had uh, a family member that was at home that could teach the children. In the United States, for us, we have two working adults. And then the children have more activities than they ever have had. I mean, I know, I'm, I'm trying to drive my son to here and my daughter there and try to make both things and get back and, you know, you're, you're buying McDonald's and we're 
tossing the food in the back of the car, just in time to get them to their piano practice or their soccer game. It's not a way to learn etiquette. And in business, it's expected. Because in business, when I hire someone, I'm hiring someone that's going to be a reflection on my company. And the feedback we're hearing from industry is that these young people coming out of colleges and universities are brilliant, high GPAs, technically smart, have no professionals, more than 50% of them, or they have Facebook pictures that they shouldn't have, that they're being found. So that is the drivers that are causing this need for uh, relationships to be a strategy. And then we see this modern protocol in various industries, government, associations, academia, nonprofits, of course the hospitality industry, but the number one we're seeing that are picking up using protocol and the strategic uh, relationships is in multinational corporations. They've realized it's time. We have to focus on our people and not just the technology. And, and protocol can be applied in various ways. Areas that are easy to use protocol are in visits, if you have visitors coming, prospective clients,